and welcome back to California Geology. I am Dr. Robert Lopez and today I want to talk about Lassen Peak and the Lassen Volcanic Field in Northern California. Now Lassen Volcano, Volcano itself is a lava dome and it's one of the largest lava domes on Earth uh, and it's had a, a, a history where it first formed about 27,000 years ago and it was dormant for pretty much 27,000 years until about 1914 1915 when it erupted again. Uh, now, recent work done by geologists at the U.S. Geological Survey, uh, uh, Michael Clinn and Patrick Muffler, published a map in 2010 uh, and came up with an interesting stratigraphy, or at least volcanic stratigraphy, for the Lassen Volcanic Area. And, it, and in fact, if we read our book, our book talks about these Western Ca Cascade series volcanoes, which are 20 to 30 million years old, indicating a long-lived history of, of uh, uh, convergent margin tectonics in Northern California. And then um, uh, there, they talk about this Cascade series in your book, which is uh, the High Cascades, which is uh, 3 million years to present. And that would include our Lassen Peak and Shasta and volcanoes where we see today. Um, also in the in the Lassen area, there's this um, Nomlaki Tuff, which is found all over the northern, actually all over the Sacramento Valley, uh, in several places, even in the western Sacramento Valley, and it indicates another eruption of a of a stratovolcano, like in Mount Shasta, that used to be in this Lassen area that that experienced a catastrophic eruption 3.4 million years ago. But obviously, more eruptions have occurred, and new volcanoes built up destroyed and it's sort of there's a cycle of volcanic buildup, destruction, lava dome buildup, new volcanoes, so it's, it's a continuous cyclical pattern that we're seeing. Now, um, uh, Clint and, and Muffler uh, really looked at the more recent activity and they came up with three um, uh, units, an older Rockland caldera complex which dates to a, about uh, 825,000 years ago to 609,000 years ago. Uh, uh, the, the older lava flows and lava domes include dacite and rhyolite domes and then uh, culminating with a caldera type eruption uh, that, that produced about um, maybe about 60 to 70 cubic kilometers of pyroclastic material that, that erupted and, and we know that deposit today all over Northern California called the Rockland Ash. In fact, um, Rockland ash is exposed here in San Francisco. You can find Rockland ash here in the Santa Clara Valley, San Jose area. Then the next episode uh, is uh, the famous Brokoff Volcano. And many people uh, were certain that this Brokoff Volcano must have experienced a, ca a catastrophic caldera type eruption. But uh, the lavas uh, uh, that are associated with the Brokoff Volcano are actually younger than that pyroclastic unit of the Rockland Ash. So obviously the Brokoff Volcano wasn't broken off due to some caldera complex. Uh, uh, what Muffler and, and Clinn suggest is that the volcano he is heavily eroded by, by um, volcanic gases and acidic waters because there's a pretty intense hydrothermal uh, system in the volcanic core. And um, the rock basically turns to a spongy porous must, mush. And this stuff is easily eroded by, by stream erosion and glacial erosion. So Brokaw Volcano is probably due more to uh, an eros erosive episode rather than a, a catastrophic blast. Now, um, uh, in fact, the uh, uh, Muffler and, and Clint do suggest that, that uh, or say that the volcano's core was eviscerated by, by uh, uh, glacial erosion. <laughs> And then finally, the, the younger feature in the Lassen area, the more prominent feature, occurred in the last 300,000 years to present, and that's called the Lassen Dome Field. And that Lassen Dome Field inc includes Lassen Peak itself, which is, again is 27,000 years old, and the recent eruptions of 1914 through 1917 uh, at this volcano. There's also a, a, a place called the, the Chaos Crags, which are relatively young. These are about 1,100 years old. And these chaos crags are a series of maybe six or seven of these individual lava domes making up this, this structure. And um, one of these domes uh, collapsed in maybe an earthquake. In fact, they, they call it a cold collapse where the lava dome shook loose and collapsed in this a large avalanche flow here. Um, 
And they have actually have a date on this to about two, 278 years ago, this, this uh, uh, landslide type eruption occurred. So here's another view of the of Lassen Peak with a 1915 eruption here, and then the Chaos Crags right in here, and then that that dome that collapsed. And you can see the the debris. In fact, they call they call this debris the Chaos Jumbles, the Chaos Jumbles. Now, Lassen Peak uh, had a climactic eruption in in on May 22nd of 19 of 1915, and remember it was dormant for about 27,000 years since its initial uh, uh, development. And, um, and I'd like to go through some of the, the eruptive history uh, for that 1915 eruption. Beginning in 1914, um, B.F. Loomis, a local uh, uh, amateur photographer out of Red Bluff, uh, uh, took some amazing photos of, of the events that occurred uh, before and after that 1915 eruption. Here in June of 1914, the volcano first shows signs of eruption by having a steam blast. And so what happens, uh, geologists call this a phreatic eruption. What happens is as the magma moves up, it encounters the groundwater under the volcano and it flashes that water to steam. The water flashes steam and causes an explosive episode. They're mostly just gas and expanding water coming out of the volcano. Then also in 1914, Loomis took some pictures of, of the, the north flank of Lassen Peak and we, what I want you to notice here is that uh, here in 1914, there's a mature old growth forest here, right? Again, this volcano was dormant for 27,000 years. Then um, on, on May 14th uh, uh, through and May uh, 15th, a lava dome had developed on the volcano. And there were several blasts. And on the on May nineteenth, there was actually a, a lava flow on the May, on the night of, night of May nineteenth. The lava flow flowed toward the the north here because we're on the north side here, and also toward the west side. Um, and then the climactic eruption of of May twenty second of nineteen fifteen shattered that lava flow. So see that flow that you can see here uh, uh, on before the climactic eruption of of May twenty second. Here it's gone. And so, um, other things to notice is uh, the, the tall strand stands of trees here have been knocked down. So this area is called the devastated area. Now, um, uh, in fact, I have Google Earth here. I want to zoom in to Lassen Peak here. And we could actually still see that lava flow that's on the western slope of the volcano. So we'll zoom down in here. So there's Lassen. So here's a north flank here, and that's where that lava flow that was blasted away, and here's that devastated area. But here, if you look carefully, you can actually see the flow from, nine, from also 1915, um, that flow down toward the west, right? So that's our flow that flowed to the west from that eruption of 19, uh, May 22nd, or May 19th of 1915. So there's our, our um, uh, Lassen volcano. If we go a little bit over here, we can see the Chaos Crags. Uh, here they are. And then you'll see the the chaos, the chaos jumbles, which are this debris avalanche flow here. Now, also, this is a, a an active volcano, and there's still magma down there. The California Volcano Observatory, CALVO, uh, uh, has seismic recording stations there around the volcano, and in November of last year, they they recorded 80 earthquakes within a span of maybe five or six days, all are in the vicinity. It could be magma moving at depth, or it could be related to faulting in the area. But nonetheless, uh, the U.S. Geological Survey and the California Volcano Observatory is um, keeping, keeping an eye on this. Now, um, in terms of the Rockland Caldera Complex and the Brokaw Volcano, well, uh, uh, the Park Service produces a, a map similar to this, showing that this Brokaw Volcano uh, was maybe about 11,000 feet high, it had a volume similar to that of, of, of Shasta, so it was a pretty uh, large um, uh, stratovolcano that occurred here. But again, this one, it's probably been eroded through, um, through glacial erosion and not necessarily a caldera collapse. Um, but for the Rockland caldera, there was there's an older stratovolcano that did experience this caldera co collapse. So the way calderas work is that the magma chamber gets really close to the surface maybe three, five kilometers under the volcano and makes the volcano gravitationally unstable. Uh, 
So the volcano sort of founders and sinks into its own magma chamber, sort of like a piston in an engine. And when it sinks into this magma chamber, it causes all this magma to be evacuated in a huge pyroclastic eruption. And there is an eruption uh, associated with that, that uh, Rockland Ash caldera complex, and it's called the Rockland Ash. And it's here to say about 600,000 years old, and that your book also says that, but the latest date is 609,000 years. Pretty close. But nonetheless, this unit can be seen all over Northern California, down here in the, in the Monterey Bay area, and the, in the San Jose area, we can also find this Rockland Ash. Uh, so that is from a volcano that predated the Brokaw Volcano. In fact, that Brokaw Volcano, um, the Forest Service calls, uh, uh, it calls it Mount Tehama. Right, so the Mount Tehama is the name they use for it. Um, geologists call it mostly the Brokaw volcano, and we think it's pro probably mostly related to uh, an erosion because the rock was heavily altered by volcanic gases and acidic waters and made it really, really weak. But you can sort of see the outline of the volcano with Brokaw Mountain here and Mount Diller over here. Now, um, here's a photo taken from an airplane. You can sort of see the outline again of, of Brokaw Mountain and, and Mount Diller here, showing that volcano. And then um, uh, a colleague of mine, Gary Hayes, has uh, drew, the, drew on here showing kind of the, the general size of the stratovolcano, what it might have looked like uh, uh, before, the, before the catastrophic eruption of, of 609,000 years ago. Now, Lassen is also famous for uh, these fumarolic vents called Bumpus Hell. Um, the, again, this is also experiencing heavy... Uh, uh, alteration of rock by by hot volcanic waters acidic waters um, which make the rock really um, uh, soft and, and porous the geologists often use a word called word called punky um, but anyways it's, you wouldn't want to walk around in there in fact that's what the forest service has these these walkways so you can walk on here rather than on the soft rock because um, the reason this is called bumpus uh, bumpus as hell is because a prospector bumpus here uh, uh, was walking through here looking for for ore deposits and his foot fell in one of these soft rocks and it got partially boiled and it had to be amputated. So that's why it's called Bumpus's Hell. Now, um, uh, again, uh, the, the, the boiling waters there, you can see them, these are called mud pots. You can see the boiling. So it's certainly, um, you don't want to really be walking around on that soft rock there. Now, um, uh, another region that region of the Lassen volcanic area that had recent eruptions were at Cindercone. And Cindercone at Lassen is, um, uh, in fact, if we look at this picture here, uh, it's famous partly because in, in, in the 1800s, this is an immigrant trail. So the immigrants would travel through here on covered wagons on their way to California or to the coast. And in 1850 and in 1851, uh, uh, pilgrims, pioneers coming through here, said that the volcano was erupting, that they saw a lot of. So everyone attributed uh, the eruption to happen in 1851, 1850. And if you go there, it looks very young, very young volcanic rock. Uh, but a geologist um, uh, by, by Diller, and you'll read an article Dill, uh, about Diller, who um, kind of speculated that, that it might be older, more dating back to the 1600s. Uh, and he used some tree ring dating and some, some volcanic um, uh, uh, stratigraphy or some uh, determination of the order of volcanic uh, rocks. In fact, let's look at the cinder cone. And so if you look at the map here, what he notices is that there's at least, there's two cinder cones. There's an older cinder cone that's buried right here, and it's been um, truncated, where part of it has flo flown away, flowed away. And you can see that on the map here, there's an older scoria cone, and it's exposed right in here. So that's part of right there. And then the younger cone is this one, and remember that this one experiences that Strombolian type eruption where only cinders, pyroclasts, are coming out of the central vent, uh, fountaining, and then the, the bulk of it on the side produces these long lava flows. And there is a couple of different flows that, that came out of this volcanic cone. But based on the information you'll read about in this, um, oh, there's Diller right there, uh, uh, about cinder cone, it does date back to um, uh, the 1600s here, right? So remember a lot of pioneers thought it, it erupted in the 1850s. All right, we'll stop here, and that's it for Lassen.